Hey everyone, it's Synth Designer back again with another video. Today we are continuing our series on Serum 2, the complete guide, and we'll be looking at filters and envelopes. Now the biggest change to Serum 2 with its filters and envelopes is that we now have the option for two filters here. Of course, in Serum 1 we had the option of going to the effects and adding another filter, which we still have, but Having this ability to use the filter here visually is a whole game changer that really adds a lot to Serum and our ability to shape our sounds. So let's just explore how we could use these. Before I do that, I just wanted to mention that if you're unfamiliar, I am running a whole series on the complete guide to Serum 2. I break down individual elements into smaller pieces so you could just explore them. If you don't want to learn about filters and envelopes, then I talk about the different oscillator types, and I'll continue this series until I'm basically done with everything important within Serum 2. I took a little bit of a break, but I am back now with more content. Quickly, I want to start with the envelopes. There are not that many changes to the envelope section here. Uh, a cool thing you could do now is really just zoom in on how you want this to look, which may or may not help you. You can also lock it in a certain way so you can't move it around, unlock it, and then obviously you could zoom in for a higher or lower time. You can switch this between BPM and uh, milliseconds. And those are just a couple of changes. Aside from that, it's basically the same thing and you can see you know if you're familiar with ADSR how to shape these envelopes uh, it will remain basically the same. So for filters prior to CRM1 we were able to have basically one filter so if we had this filter on you could hear this saw wave is filtered nicely with this MG low 12 and that is fine, you could still continue that. But now we have the option of adding filter two. So let's just turn this on and say we have just oscillator A on filter one and then filter two will have oscillator B. Basically sounds the same, right? However, we can now individually shift these. So all of a sudden I'm opening up this filter for filter B. And you might be thinking, okay, why is this dominating the sound, right? So if we have this wide open, obviously that sounds open. Well, we have MG low 12 here. Why is this sound so dominant? Well, the levels will obviously matter here. And the other aspect of it, you can change things from here. So we have this ability here. So if we want to shape this by two different envelopes, we can. If we have oscillators A and B routed to filter one and two, you'll hear it like this. So we have both the sound going here and to here. Now, why does this filter two dominate? Say we up the level again. That has to do with over here. So you can see this little kind of toggle here, filter one, obviously it's only filtered to one. And then here we have it directly in the middle. So then you could choose which sound is more dominate, dominant for the filter. So if we want to have more of that open sound with filter two, then we just adjust it here. Or if we want it to be more dominant on filter one, then we can adjust it that way. And that really allows you to shape the sound in any way you want. The saw wave is a perfect example because it has that harsher upper harmonic tone. If we just want a little bit of that, then we can shape it this way while having basically the maximum openness of it, right? We have all this tone, but it's much quieter because what's dominating more is filter one. And I'm hoping that makes a lot of sense to all of you. I know it's a little bit com complicated because it's not a simple just one filter type of thing, but it really allows you to shape your sound a lot better. 
Let's just up the detune and the voices here. We have a nice pad and we can hear that upper harmonic range. Say we want to shape that a little bit differently. It's kind of easy to shape it with just two of the same shapes on the same octave, but say we wanted to keep this octave on just this. It really shapes it differently all of a sudden. So we want filter one to be a little bit tighter, so we change that. We kind of get that nice low sound to it. It's a deep bassy sound, but we don't want to be completely bassy. Just give it that nice rounded tone to it where it's not kind of a thin pad sound. So we let, let's add B back in. And we'll turn down the level a bit. Right now we have it that they're both on here and then we could add B back into filter one. So it adds even more of that content because we're giving it over to A and B and it's rounding out the sound even more. So I'm hoping I'm making sense here. These are just very basic ways of how you can use these two filters, but it's an important step to creating the sounds that you really want and having the ability to shape them in a way you really want. Uh, quickly, I just want to look at one last thing and that is the new as two filters. So we have all new filters here. We have our traditional ones that we've seen in Serum 1 and now a couple of others. This diffuser one is cool. So take a look at them. There's a few new ones and they are modeled after some cool analog ones too. So they're worth exploring. Let me know down in the comments if you found this video helpful and please take a look at the other videos in this series. Hopefully you enjoyed them as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.